good morning everyone i would like to thank organizers for giving the, me this opportunity i would be talking on abstracts presented in a mass uh, this year on bone health so first one is a multi center prospective study on the efficacy and safety of denosumab in gi cancer patients who are receiving short term periodic pre medication with dexa so they previously showed that the short term periodic uh, use of steroids uh, reduces bone mineral densities and they, they conducted this study to evaluate the efficacy and safety of denosumab for prevention of chemotherapy induced decrease in bone mineral density the eligibility criteria was patients of gi cancer who were uh, receiving sh short term steroids as pre medication for cinv high risk patient with steroid induced secondary osteoporosis and no prior treatment for osteoporosis the dose of uh, denosumab given was 60 mg single subcutaneous within a week before induction chemotherapy primary endpoint is to investigate the bone mineral density change on the lumbar spine between baseline and after 6 weeks of induction chemotherapy they recruited patient from april 2017 to feb 2018 49 cases were enrolled two patient did not meet the inclusion criteria and one patient died before treatment one patient refused just the before the after the enrollment one case was did not uh, did not measure bmd at baseline and four patients were not measured bmd on week 16 such as refusal and discontinuation of treatment so overall uh, after the accrual target only 30 patients that is 71% patients could be analyzed and they showed that the bone mineral density change of the lumbar spine was increased by plus 27 percent during the treat after 16 weeks from the baseline and no one uh, suffered bone fraction uh, bone fractures or in the uh, treatment population so they found that denosumab administration could prevent reduction in bone mineral density and bone fracture fractures second poster is a, a study ongoing study analysis of risk factors and treatment outcome of osteonecrosis uh, of the jaw in cancer patient receiving anti resorptive therapies of, uh, which was from tata itself osteoarthritis is a side effect of anti resorptive therapies and risk factors are the and uh, anti resorptive therapies itself and and uh, dental alveolar surgeries during uh, during the anti resorptive therapy other treatments such as steroids immunosuppressants and hormonal therapy may also increase risk of uh, mronj so subjects with proven malignancies and bony metastases will be accrued in two groups patients referred prior to initiation of anti resorptive therapies and patient referred uh, referred to them after the anti resorptive therapies this patients uh, with dental status would be recorded at baseline and they would be observed at six monthly interval and if any intervention would required would be rendered dental intervention uh, their demographic details would be recorded and details of anti resorptive drugs dental status would be recorded at baseline at every follow up visit drug details disease and oral status would be uh, noted down they would even note the calcium levels presence of any skeletal related events and osteonecrosis staging and treatment so results are still awaited third is cost analysis of bone fracture in colorectal patients receiving chemotherapy Uh, although bone health was ga has gaining increasing attention in the gi patients there is few data of assessing the im economic impact of fracture they investigated the cost caused by fracture in the colorectal patients who had received chemotherapy they retrospectively analyzed the cost of fracture in colorectal patients from january uh, 2015 to december 2018 including their medical fee bill so they could analyze out of the 14 patients who had fracture during the study period 14 patients could be analyzed with a median age of 70 years nine female and five males who were on adjuvant and uh, non adjuvant therapy was six on the adjuvant therapy and eight on the non adjuvant therapy the various fractures were common was vertebral fractures uh, due to fall in majority of them the cost of for a month just after the fracture were 2 lakh japanese yen or 1900 us dollars for treatment of the fracture in two patients the hip arthroplasty was done and the cost was 12 lakh 80000 there was a significant correlation between hip fracture and surgery the cost of hip fracture was significantly higher than that of other fractures there were no difference in survival time after fracture between hip and non hip fracture so they found that hip fracture would not affect survival but it was required large expense says which were burden the financial burden associated with cancer care therefore it is necessary to be careful of our hip fractures in gi colorectal patients next study is a multi centric experience of management of bone metastases due to various malignancies bone mets is one of the common presentation of various malignancies and typically associated with short term prognosis in cancer patient 
this patient's primary visit with the clinics with complaints of pain with poor quality of life and functional disability to anal uh, so they analyze the demographic treatment profile and survival of cases treated in different centers combined they accrued total 500 patients over a four year period from 2013 to 2017 median age of the patients were 50 years most common primary cancer was uh, prostate cancer followed by breast and then lung uh, among 75% of the bone mites in female patient were due to uh, breast cancer followed by cervix and lung the predominant reason for presentation was a, a pain mainly neuropathic bone pain followed by pathological fracture and including which in, even included spinal cord compression and associated soft tissue mass so total 430 uh, 410 patients were uh, enrolled in the study 30% had synchronous visceral mites to single or multiple sites like uh, brain lung and liver 90% cases received palliative radiation to multiple uh, multiple dosing schedules the median survival was of patients with bone mites was 12.6 months in the prostate cancer 7.5 months in lung patients and 12.3 uh, uh, months in the breast cancer patients and 20 months in thyroid cancer patients 80% had symptomatic improvement in the continuous pain and 90% had uh, improved quality of life after receiving uh, symptomatic therapy. Overall bony metastasis from primary cancers have poor survival but it is still possible to maintain a good quality of life with prompt diagnosis and proper symptomatic management. Next is a high dose uh, vitamin D supplementation and exercise for cancer treatment induced bone loss in breast cancer patient on aromatase inhibitors, a phase 2 randomized control trial. They divided patients into three arms, those uh, with one was a placebo arm, one was high dose vitamin D arm and third one was high dose vitamin D arm with uh, exercise. So uh, patient in uh, placebo arm received a uh, uh, placebo in high dose vitamin arm they receive uh, placebo arm even received uh, the maintenance recommended dose of vitamin d high dose vitamin d arm received 50000 international units per week and high dose vitamin arm plus exercise arm even received ex uh, did exercises so uh, their bone uh, be vitamin d levels and calcium levels were assessed at baseline week 6 12 18 and 24 Bone mineral density, uh, density was assessed at the hip via dexa scan at baseline and at 24 weeks 116 patients were enrolled and 90 patients could be evaluated. They showed that th there is no difference between the calcium levels in all the three arms. Uh, 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 sorry, compared to placebo, uh, there was significant difference between the two arms, between vitamin D and uh, vitamin D plus exercise arm. And they even showed that bone mineral density was increased uh, in the two arms of vitamin D and vitamin D plus exercise compared to placebo. But there was no difference between the two arms of vitamin D where exercise did not help much. So overall, high dose vitamin D and exercise significantly reduced the uh, complications in breast cancer patients where, and it uh, demonstrated safety and feasibility. A randomized phase 3 trial is required to confirm these findings. Uh, medications related to osteonecrosis a clinical radiological analysis. So medication related to MRONJ is still being an unsolved problem in dental clinics. Therefore, it is important to assess clinical radiological factors which could help the clinician identify the risk of patients at, for MRONJ. The objective of this study is to assess how dependable clinical and radiological factors are in diagnosis and follow up for MRONJ. So 50 consecutive patients who were referred to dental surgeon between December 2015 and March 2018 who were at risk for MRONJ were evaluated. Their clinical examination including the soft and hard tissue of the oral cavity along with the cervical lymph nodes and radiological features of bone sclerosis, bone sequestration, cortical surface irregularity, osteolytic changes, persistent extraction socket and periosteal responses were screened by a cone beam CT. Uh, their clinical features, radiological features were correlated and diagnosis and follow-up of MRNJ suspected cases were carried out. They could enroll total 50 patients with a mean age of 62 years and out of which 28 were evaluated at final evaluation. 64% had bone sclerosis, 64% had cortical surface irregularity, 64% had ear osteolytic image changes and 36% showed bone sequestration uh, at the uh, evaluation of by cone beam CT. 22% has persistent extraction socket and 20% periosteal reaction and were more prone to have silent clinical appearance of MRONJ. So they concluded that see, a cone beam CT has become a popular in recently uh, years of imaging in MRONJ for MRONJ. 
easy and inexpensive access to three dimensional images of bone structures of very high resolution and lower exposure to radiation when compared to co common ct and main advantage are the main advantages of C uh, cone beam ct and many signs of mr ranger could be screened and monitored for long term follow up thank you